Hey there, Sunbird Nation. Here's a short video to show you the differences, the obvious differences in the intake manifolds on the Turbo Sunbird versus the later MPFI, you know, multi-port fuel injection manifold. The rumor I've heard is the MPFI intake is larger in the plenum area, that's this square box portion, and the runners are larger. I don't know if that's true, so what I'm planning to do is have my friend, the cylinder head porter and flow bench guy, flow these manifolds and compare them. I'm only gonna compare this one here, which is mine, and that one, which is MPFI. This one is just to show you what a stock turbo manifold looks like. I also wanna have him flow my, uh, my cylinder head, which I just got back from my buddy Scott from Power Play Automotive and Machine. You should check out his YouTube channel. There's a shameless plug, <laughs> but I'm returning the favor because he posted a video of what a total pain in the ass it was for him to uh, O-ring my cylinder head, and uh, he plugged my channel, so I'm return of the favor, buddy. Here you go, Scott. Hope you get droves of subscribers now. <laughs> anyway, that's my cylinder head, and this is just a stock two-liter cylinder head. And I want to compare the flow difference. You know, years ago when I built this engine, my friend ported that head for me, this one, and he flowed, he flowed this head before and after, but I can't recall the numbers. I don't know if I ever had it written down. I probably did, because he usually gives you a sheet. All I recall is him saying, the head flowed like shit in stock configuration, and now it just flows crappy. So, uh, it's not a good flowing cylinder head. But you turn up the boost, and that makes all things wonderful. So, anyway, what I want to do is have him do both cylinder heads and both manifolds. And... Uh, We'll get some numbers that way we can put the myths to rest. I, I originally had planned to fill this manifold and this manifold up with water and measure how many cc's they held, which I can still do. That would give you an idea of the difference in total volume inside the plenum and the runners, but I won't know which is which. But I figure in the end, the flow, that'll tell everything, right? So I'll just have them flow it and I'm a little lazy to plug everything off and uh, fill the manifolds with water. I mean, I can. If I ever get bored someday, maybe I'll do it, but we'll see. So anyway, uh, the obvious differences right off the bat, the turbo manifold is red, of course. The MPFI is bare aluminum. Now, this red is some kind of uh, ceramic or baked-on heavy-duty red paint or, or uh, what do they call that stuff, uh, powder finish. I'm not sure what it is. I do know this intake. I stripped it when I uh, modified it. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. I was thinking of my other manifold. I have another manifold. You may have seen in some of my old videos that I I actually welded on a, a piece of three inch tubing, a two and a half inch tubing, and I put the throttle body like over here. That's the one I stripped. It's been a long time. I sort of forget things, but I stripped that manifold. I painted it with like a ceramic heat barrier paint and I painted it red right over that. This is a stock turbo manifold. So that is the original coating or whatever it is. Uh, so this is representative of what a stock manifold looks like. This is actually the original one off my engine uh, in, my, in my car. So the original throttle body hole is small because the original throttle body is 43 millimeter. It's this little guy right here. Uh, I even wrote on it, my original throttle body, upside down, but that's what it is. And that just bolts on right there. And it's teeny tiny. You can see it's very, very small. It's 43 millimeter. Not very big at all. So one of the first things I did to my car after I put that bigger turbo on was I read that the 53 millimeter Fiero throttle body was a bolt-on swap, which if you watch my channel or you read anything I wrote on the internet, that's bullshit. It is not a bolt-on swap. It is a pain in the ass to make it fit. There's a ton of modifications to do to it. Uh, you have to modify the bell crank. It barely fits the manifold. It bolts on the two stock bolt holes but you have these Allen head screws because you can't get a socket in there. It barely clears the rail. Uh, the rail comes with a little ding in it from stock. I had to ding it a little more to make it clear. And then you can barely get the hose on between the throttle body throat and the uh, rail. So that's really tight. But again, the, uh, the throttle body doesn't bolt right on and go. You have to modify it. The, uh, the vacuum port's in the wrong place. I believe there's also a, the IAC channel's different. I had to modify that. Uh, it's got uh, coolant that flows through it, so you have to block that off, plug the holes. So there was probably a date's worth of work in that thing to make it work, but anyway, uh, it's not a bolt-on, and now that I've had them side-by-side -side and I checked in with a vernier caliper, I don't even think it's 53 millimeter. I think it's more like 50. So 
I, it's a huge increase from 43, but it's not this hallowed, you know, 40 horsepower bolt on. Not at all. I mean, the only thing I did notice going through my old time slips, it seems like I ran 101 after I got that throttle body on. And prior to that, I couldn't crack 100. So if that's the case, it's worth 20 horsepower. I can't say if it's all the throttle body. It's probably a combination of the increased boost and the bigger throttle body and everything else I was doing. But the throttle body definitely is worth something. But let's move on to this intake manifold. The MPFI manifold has a 46 millimeter throttle body. I don't know why GM did that, but they did. Um, this is it right here. It's a handsome little devil. And you can see that it's drastically different than the 43 millimeter. You know, the bell crank's different. The, the physical, you know, uh, shadow of it is much larger. Uh, the bolt holes are not in the same place. If I go to put this on this manifold, you'll see it will not physically line up. There's one hole right there, and the other hole is actually off the manifold. It's in space. See that by my big fat hand? Let me move my hand. See it better now? It's actually hanging off the manifold. It's in outer space there. So you couldn't bolt this on if you wanted to. And you can see that the footprint is very small. And this one's very large. So it bolts on here like nothing. Uh, there was a, also a rumor that this was raised higher up to clear the rail. The rail that goes with this thing, I have it over here, it's square. You know, this one's round. This one, I believe, is square. It's like a flat square. So it's a totally different rail. The plugs are different. Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, it's square. Well, okay, I take that back. It's... It's half moon shaped. <laughs> How's that sound? But it's a completely different regulator, completely different rail. It's a whole different animal. So I measured my manifold and this manifold from the bench up, and it appears that this bottom edge is in the same place. So I can't see how it's raised. I don't know what's going on here. Something definitely looks different about it, but I think it's an illusion. I mean, look at it. I kind of have them mocked up on the bench at the same basic height. You can see they're kind of level with each other. If anything, I think the 46 millimeter throttle bore is lower than the 43, but again, it could be an illusion. So I don't see any appreciable difference there. It is 46 millimeter, which is nice. So that gives you a, you know, a definitely an, up, an uptick in flow as they, you know, pose this little guy here. So there's an obvious difference. Um, you know, if you want to bolt this one on your car, I'm just trying to show you. It's not a bolt on, like your throttle linkage. You got a bolt hole right there, and then there's one in the center here for the uh, the top mount, and there's one at the bottom. See it down there in the back. This one has the back one, and it has the middle one, but it's missing the front one. It's just not there. So you have to weld something on, or just do without it. Also, the uh, electronic spark control. You can see it's on the back of the manifold. It bolts on, tucks up nice and. Uh, hidden back there. This one doesn't have that. It's uh, There's nothing back there. I mean, there, there are bolt holes back there, but they're not the same. So you'd have to reorient that thing on the firewall or make up a bracket to hold it. So again, I'm just trying to show you, it's not a bolt on. You can't just take it up one cow throat on this one. Everything's gonna be the same. It's You're gonna have to do some fabrication. So if you don't care about that, you're not scared, hey, have at it, bro. But uh, I'm just trying to tell you the difference that you can see. Alternate amount looks to be the same. The bracket's there, the bracket's there. Uh, the face of it looks to be the same. It's a bolt-on in that respect. There's just enough different about it that you may not like it. Just looking at it now, it looks like this, I call it a wing. You know, this bolt hole back here for the power stand bracket. Looks like this one's a lot larger. I don't know why. Maybe the bracket changed. Because I want to say they only used MPFI in what, 90? Is it 93, 94? Or is it 92, 93, 94? Uh, anyway, maybe they changed the bracket back there. I don't have that, so... Uh, regardless, again, it's, it's not going to be a bolt-on in like a one-day job unless you have all the parts. Uh, you, you don't care about fabricating stuff, so there you go with that. Uh, of more importance is the ports at the cylinder head. That's where it bolts on. Um, I have a Verde caliper, and I also did a down-and-dirty test. This is a cap of a uh, brake clean bottle, uh, and you can see on the 40, well, the MPFI intake, she barely goes in. I mean, it goes in that far. Not a whole heck of a lot. This one barely fits at all. This one won't fit. This one won't fit. Uh, mine swallows it up, up the injector, boss. 
And I said, oh, I must have poured the shit out of this thing, right? But no, here's a stock one. I mean, it takes it in, you know, quite a bit of the way. Uh, this one has no injectors in it, so it's, well, actually they don't protrude, so it's an apples to apples. So you can see it's, you know, it fits. So it's, it's a larger opening, except for this one with the dog leg. That is a boss that corresponds to the cylinder head. Um, let me turn this thing around so you can see it. I don't know why it's there. Uh, I took it out of mine. It's right there. See it? I believe it corresponds to that. Oh, it's a, it's like a boss they use to hold the head. That's what it was when they machined them, I think. There's one there and there's one here. On my cylinder head, this is some super high-tech stuff, right? Uh, on my cylinder head, I took it out. I welded it up. And ground it out. Where, where would it be? It was, uh, let's see, the bottom is that side. It's on the front side. Oh, it's on the back side. It's at the back side of the head. So it's right here. It would have been here. Yeah, there was, there was the boss right there. I filled it in with like JB Will. Actually, no, I drove a steel dowel, and that's right there. That's a steel dowel. I drove that in, and then I just ported the head to it. So, you know, the, uh, the port. So that took care of that. Uh, so, obviously, the actual inlet of the port throat is bigger on the turbo manifold than on the NPFI. Um, I don't know why. They take the same gasket. Uh, so you can lay the gasket up. If I do this right. <laughs> of course, I screwed it up. Put the gasket up here. You know, again, I, I tend to port match my intake manifold and exhaust manifolds or headers to my gaskets. And you can see this one was ported like directly, you know, to it, boom. It's a pretty perfect fit. Uh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, the MPFI manifold is lacking a bit. You'd have to, let me get down on one knee here so you can see a little better. You can see there's some meat there to be taken away. Yeah, not a, not a ton, but enough that a break clean bottle cap will fit. <laughs> uh, so there's a difference right there. It's probably, a, I don't know, 16th or a little, little more than 16th all the way around. Uh, same here. And again, you got that dog leg that you have to grind it out of the gasket, which is no big deal. It just takes a second. So you can see that there's a port mismatch here. Uh, before I crow too loudly about how awesome my manifold is, this is a stock manifold again. And this gasket fits pretty perfectly. Lines up pretty perfectly. So the turbo manifold definitely gets high marks from me for port match. Um, just for the hell of it, let's put this gasket against the head. This is a stock. Ah, I get the shit on this head, but. I guess it does on it, but I can knock one off quickly. Um, yeah, this is a stock cylinder head. And uh, actually, you know what? I'm on the wrong side. Duh. There we go. This is the intake side, right? This is the front of the motor. No, I was right, duh. Okay, so I don't rehearse any of these videos. I just do them on the fly live. So if I look like a jackass, so be it. So this goes on here. I look stupid, I don't care. I watched on the channel, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is a stock gasket on a stock head. No port work, nothing done to this at all. I just degreased it a little bit today. So my cylinder head porting guy is looking and go, Ugh, get it out of here, it's gross. He doesn't like dirty stuff coming in. That's a pretty good fit. I mean, look at it, it's, it lines up damn close. I mean, you can move the gasket around a little bit, but it's, it's damn close. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the uh, the MPFI intake is not port matched very well, and the turbo one is. Now, this cylinder head right here, the old one, I can't tell you that this is a turbo head. I don't believe there's any difference. You know, let's not start the internet ablaze with stupid rumors. Uh, I do not believe there's any difference in the cylinder heads. I think they're all the same. I'm trying to see if there's a part number I can correspond it to my head. I believe there is right here. Uh, if I remember correctly, I bought a parts car one time. And this is sitting in the back. So this is just a spare head I had lying around. Uh, it says 209.89, which sounds like to me, it's a 1989 head. And 209 means something to somebody, but nothing to me. So uh, where is the part number? GM, oh, 2670. That means something. Huh? 2670. It says 91 up here. I don't know what that means. 2.0E. I don't know what that means. Ah, uh, let's look at my head, see what that one says. 
My head says 2670, 2.0 E. Mine says 80, 89, 89, I guess. Uh, nothing in here. This side is 902088. I don't think that one has that on it. 902088. That is on the exhaust side. Is there a flat plane there that I missed? Yeah. Uh, this one is a, it's a 20989. Huh. So it does have a, a number on it, it's just different. 902 89 or 88, whatever the hell it says. So it is uh yeah, this is this is 209, and that was 902. That's weird. That is really weird, but whatever. I don't think it makes any difference anyway. Let's assume that this is not a turbo head. That one I know was a turbo head, this one, because I took it off of the engine that every all the guts are in this motor. As I've said before, this is a GM-fitted block. It was a brand-new block. All the guts are from a 90 turbo motor that had a rod through the block. So I basically re-blocked re it. So I'm going to say the heads are the same. Um... So the ports are the same. I think at this point, GM either was trying to boost the bottom end up a little bit by making the runner smaller, or they just didn't give a shit about quality control at that point. <laughs> I mean, it's an Opal engine, so however fit and finish Opal gave it to GM, is probably the way they ran it. So anyway, this video is getting too long, so let's move on a little bit. So obviously the 46 millimeter throttle bore, you know, in uh, American terms, that's, that's roughly two inch, 190. Uh, the 50, uh, 43 millimeter, that is uh, one inch 700. Now mine, I was trying to make it fit that Fiero throttle body. Mine is big. Um, I could tell you how I did it, but then it wouldn't be a secret. I did it on the car. I'll show you what a crazy man I am. Uh, this measures two inch. Yeah, just shy of 030, depending on where you put it. Let's let's just call it 030. Two inch 030. So the 46 millimeter one, the MPFI, it's still bigger than mine. We're in a measuring contest now. Uh, yeah, two inch, almost 100. Wow, that's uh, that's a lot bigger than mine. I don't know why they made it so big. I mean, 46 millimeter is no one near. I mean, I'll lock the Vernier up at just shy of two inch 100. So you can see that that's a lot bigger than 46 millimeter. I mean, here's the back. She don't fit. Boom. Yeah, it's bigger than that. I mean, not by a whole lot, but anyway, it's really no consequence. So put that back. All right, so I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that the turbo manifold flows better than the MPFI manifold. I'm going to flow it, and I'm going to see, and I may be a total ass when I, you know, the numbers come in, but I have a feeling it flows better. I don't know why. I just do. Uh... I don't know anybody who has ever run that one and then gone to that one and said, oh my God, what a difference. So I've showed any empirical testing for the quarter mile or a dyno. I just know a friend of mine put it on his car and he said it was bigger. And I said, you, how do you know that? And he said, oh, I read it on the internet. And you can look at it, it looks physically bigger. It doesn't to me, it seems to be the same depth front to back, same width side to side. Unless the walls are thicker on one than the other, I, I just don't see it. So anyway, we'll find out. Uh, so that's it. There's your visual differences. Hope it helped you a little bit. If it didn't, well, hey, you know, you killed 17 minutes, 18 minutes watching me babble, so 19 minutes now. I can go on a little longer if you want, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you didn't, sorry. But as I always say, you get what you paid for. So, all right, see you later.